Welcome to his channel. Hello and welcome to Convict Inc. I am your host, Robert Rosso, and sitting beside me is my lovely wife, Marta. Please subscribe, like, and share these videos. I would appreciate it. We would appreciate it. Um, the ad revenue threshold is making nothing, but I don't know. It's anyway, please, uh, I would appreciate all the support I can get. If you follow this channel, or if it's your first time, uh, well, if you follow this channel, you'll know I was sentenced to life without parole, 1998 for nonviolent drug offense. That is one count conspiracy to distribute methamphetamine. Uh, after sentencing, shortly thereafter, I was sent to the United States Penitentiary in Leavenworth, Kansas, also known as USP Leavenworth, where I quickly, dove into the whole drug and alcohol scene. Um, it took me about a year to start going to the shoe, but after, once I started, it was I was there frequently, often. Matter of fact, I probably did more time, I did do more time in the hole or shoe in Leavenworth than I did in general population, and I was there for five years. So the time frame I'm speaking of, by the way, is from 1998 to the end of 2002. There were at least four or five times, maybe more, that I was an orderly in the shoe. Now, at Leavenworth, at least back then, they used to try to get somebody from every race to be an orderly. Sometimes even different, depending on how many gang members were in the shoe at the time, they get like the uh, a member of the gang to come out and be an orderly. Being an orderly in a special housing unit uh, entails several different things. You can be a range orderly, and that would be sweeping and mopping the tier. You could be the laundry orderly, that means picking up the dirty laundry and that's, that are in uh, net laundry bags. And then when they come back clean, you pass them out. Um, you can help the officers pass out trays. That happens sometimes. I've passed out trays once before uh, because they were being slow. There, there's, uh, or you can be uh, work with, and clean up the red cages or the the bubble. Just there was probably about four different orderly positions. Oh, yeah, the front end orderly. That was like the head honcho. Anyway, one of the things, the 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 reason a lot of guys liked being an orderly was because they could get out of their cell, uh, get out of their cell, and if you were doing drugs and alcohol. Uh, you can run around and find out where the dope is, who's making wine and whatnot. There was a time that I went to the shoe and I had hundreds of books of stamps. Uh, a book of stamps was worth $5 back then. And I had, I got in, uh, I had them in my legal work, my legal property. And I got a property officer, that is the, the CO who passes out your personal property in the shoe. This property officer didn't go through anything. So when I realized he wasn't looking through anything, I had him hand me an envelope where I stashed all the stamps and I got them all in. Well, with that many stamps, and I think I had a couple months to do, I, I put it out there that, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to buy whatever dope anybody's got. And I started having guys make me and my bro Kenny wine. Kenny was my celly at the time. And so with wine, typically, for example, a batch of wine, a gallon, if you have 10 apples, and 150 packets of sugar, that would make a gallon of wine. I've done it with 100 packs of sugar. Uh, it's a little weak. It depends if it's grapefruit, if it was apple, if it was oranges. That was usually the, the type of wine we made in the hole. But uh, grapefruit was probably the, one of some of the best for potatoes or whatever. But anyway, so I had, we, me and Kenny, or I had a different, cells making batches of wine for us so i forgot how much i paid twenty dollars for a batch of wine that's three to four days sitting on a batch uh, i even supplied the fruit and the sugar because i was getting it from the the shoe kitchen area they used to uh they used to uh, let us pass out the fruit they used to send boxes of fruit over every day 
and sometimes, you know, the guys in the kitchen were inmates that were giving the boxes of fruit out. They knew what time it was in the shoe. So if there's 200 guys in the shoe, they're giving out like, they're giving enough apples, like 500, 500 apples. So there's always, or 500 oranges, whatever. So there's always an excess so we can make wine. So one of the things, I'll call me on this. Okay, so one of the things uh, I would do is I would also go from cell to cell and I would pass out, uh, pass kites or contraband for guys. They used to keep the bean slots open at Leavenworth back in the day. Uh, that's their protocol that they don't for security reasons. Guys can stick their arms through the bean slots. That's the tray slots in the door. Uh, but they kept them open so we can go past stuff. They didn't care. They let us do what we want. Uh, you know, happier inmates meant less work for them, I guess. Well, I used, at some, at one point, I started uh, going from cell to cell at the guys who were drinking that night. There was always people drinking. Every night there was guys drinking, coming down off their own personal batches. So guys would just put out a cup of wine and I'd come by and I'd slam the cup and I'd go about my business. And I'd go to a different cell and I'd slam a cup and so on. And this was, you know, if it wasn't every night, it was it was five nights a week that I would do this. Plus we'd had our own batches back in the cell. I'd spend a couple hours, you know, out doing whatever I had to do, then I'd go back in and then party with Kenny. There was a guy from DC who was notorious for making knives. And this guy made, he was a beast when it came to knives. I mean, some of the best knives I've seen. Uh, and he did it with the quickness. But he got in trouble. He'd always get caught. This guy had definitely was a bug, mental health issues. And in fact, they had him housed in the shoe on B range on single cell status. Now B range had um, one, one side of the range, <clears throat> excuse me, was for guys who had either mental health problems, PC cases, whatever. They could not live with anybody. They couldn't wreck with anybody. They were all by themselves. And this guy was there. One day I went by and he saw what I was doing. That is running by and drinking cups of wine from people. And he said, hey, 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 white boy, you want some of this? And I said, what's up? And, and he, I looked down and he said, he said, it's wine. I drank it and it was pretty weak. Uh, you know, I asked him, you know, how, what he was doing, how much, he, how he was making it. He was a little kind of put off a little bit, uh, meaning he really didn't care what I had to say. But I will tell you this. So that was the first time I drank wine from a couple days later, I came back and he had some orange wine. It was, it was pretty decent. There was a kind of like a weird taste to it, but it was, I mean, it was pretty strong. He, he knew what he was doing. Uh, he just, the first batch wasn't that great. Well, this went on where he wouldn't, I tried to get him to hold the batch of wine, make a batch of wine for us. I'd bring him the supplies. He wouldn't do it. Like I said, he was weird. I, I offered him money, wouldn't do it but he would do his own thing. Well, one night I came out and I was drunk already and I went down there and he said, hey, hey, hey come here, come here, come and taste this now. I slugged this cup of wine and I was like, damn, it was, it was just something totally off with it. I said, what is it? And he said, it's, it's orange. He said, it's good, you, you like, it's for you or something like, some weird shit. So I go back and and for whatever reason, I, I left and I was going to go back to the cell. The cops were actually calling me, hey, Rosso, lock up, lock up. So I go and, and I started to lock up and then somebody asked me, uh, hey, Rob, can you go past this kite, which is a note, down on B range. Now, they're telling me to go back to my cell, which was on A range. But, you know, I'm drunk and I don't care. I, I don't, whatever they say, they're, they're, they can yell, yell at me all they want. I grabbed this kite. And I go back down, drop off the kite to where I was supposed to. I go back by this guy's cell again, and I kind of like looked and I glanced. It looked like he had his dick out. And I was like, okay, so I stopped. I w kept walking. I didn't want, definitely didn't want to see his, you know, what, what he was doing. And then I'm like, oh shit, hold on a minute. Hey, I backed up. This mother effer was pissing in the cup. So I have done a story before about wines deep, balls, uh, wines cheap, balls deep. And uh, 
where one of my some of my bros got some guy by pissing in their wine. This guy got me and probably got me every single freaking day. So he was just some sick bastard that was pissing in my cup and he was getting off on me drinking his piss or something. Man, I was so mad. When I realized I went back, I was just flipping. And if I wanted to puke, I was drunk. It was freaking horrible. Why are you laughing? <laughs> it wasn't, it was fucked up. Anyway, uh, anybody who's going to prison, first of all, stay away from drugs and alcohol, and I mean that, gangs, stay away from them. But damn sure do not drink any wine that you have not seen made yourself. Because people put stuff in wine. Hey, I, I've been a part of putting shit mad in wine. I, I have, that's vicious. So uh, put some Visine, and I know that's dangerous, but put Visine so you get the shits. I've done all that, done all that scumbag stuff. So this guy got me good, boy, and I couldn't, you know, uh, I said I can't get my hands on him. This dude was pretty big, tough guy. Uh, yeah, not like I'd really want to go with him, but I couldn't get my hands on him anyway. But that's it. This one's about me drinking piss wine. <laughs> <laughs>